Okay, I did not get on the Game of Thrones bug and we started watching it and I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much blood, I can't deal with this. So ended up, um, I ended up just watching like the first three episodes and the last three episodes. Yeah. Kind of felt like... I well, I always watch my, my TV shows or movies when I travel on planes because I'm always on a plane, mm -hmm. but I couldn't watch Game of Thrones because... So Obscene. Oh yeah, there's like and people getting killed, and I'm, I'd just be sitting in my seat, and like someone'd be looking over and be like, "What are you watching?" And I'd be like, "All right," and I'd just like shut the iPad and be like, "I guess I'll have to start this season." I like, know. I've done time. that too. I've done that too. The only time you can do that though is when you're in your pod. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, if you're not traveling in a pod, no. you've got somebody. If you're you in know, economy, you are just you are fucked. You can't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> There's a lot of things you can't watch. Yeah, I remember doing that. I'm like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. And you see the guy sitting next to me and he's listening to something, but he's like staring at my screen. I'm like, yeah, I'm not watching this right yeah. now. <laughs> this is not so enjoyable silly. for me at all. So silly. Oh yeah. my gosh. All right, take it away. Okay, yeah. So in this bonus <clears throat> okay. segment, we're going to kind of call it touring with Alex Deleon because I know a lot of people follow you and want to know a lot of different things. So we kind of just went yeah. through a lot of comments on your Instagram and different things from people like asking different things or what people maybe want to know, including the producers here. All right. Um, so Valerie, you're also welcome to kind of jump, jump in because you have probably some um, thoughts on some of these too from I mean, your experience. Because she goes touring all the time with people as well. And we'll it's kind see. of fun to get her, her reaction. I'm just a I'm, I'm just a little baby. You're nervous. You're like, what are, what are you going to ask me? <laughs> don't worry. How am I going to embarrass myself? <laughs> no, they're all pretty straightforward. No, they're pretty straightforward. Okay. Don't worry about it. It's all good. So we're going to start off with something easy. Um, best food you've ever had while traveling or touring? This is so stupid, but Italy. I mean, Italy. how do you? How does yeah. any country in the entire world even come close to the food of Italy? The cuisine is unbelievable. You get Fresh. you can get some of the best steak. Yeah. You get you know, basil and tomatoes mm -hmm. that they literally, like you get like these- Vis Picked from the garden. These Vesuvian tomatoes <laughs> that are just wow. come from right south of, of, of Naples. And they, mm -hmm. you can just tell, it was just, just picked. Just fresh. Noodles yeah. are, are hand rolled. Yeah. Um, it's, you can, you can taste every in, individual ingredient, an ingredient, she's like, I can't talk. In America, you eat and sometimes it's just like, you know, bolognese, it's just like, like a yeah, blob, gross. blobs like, of blobs meat of and sauce, sauce and yeah. you go there and you like taste everything. You taste yeah. the basil, you taste It's an the, experience, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So fish and chips doesn't quite do it. Italian more. <laughs> yeah. No, no fish and chips. I was going for I, that Japan, one. If Japan. If you, if you, yeah. if you were at a high end That's restaurant, yeah, that would be my most favorite Thank so you. far. I mean, I've yeah. yet, out of all the countries I've been to, Stephen and I were horrified. Neither of us have been to Italy. <gasps> I have ever either. I know my hubby has been promising me lived for in Europe 11 never, years of marriage know, we gotta get there all right crazy so, all right yeah just prepare to yes. gain 15 pounds when you go yeah exactly <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm, up I'm on a winter. diet now <laughs> not because I feel like I have to be but because I'm going in 10 days yeah. Yeah. knowing that I should probably lose five pounds so that yeah. you could put five or seven and on. I'll be back yes, to like normal, exactly. yeah. normal right. Yeah. right I love that you're like don't don't pay attention to how I look right now it's all for a reason yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all for a reason. I look so it's calculated. Cool. Let me explain. Like, it's not because I'm trying to look like a skeleton, I promise. Even though, you know, my bones and everything. Um, all right, so strangest place you've ever performed. Okay. This is going to beat probably anything you've ever heard, I, I would hope. <laughs> um, there's a science base called Vernansky Station. Mm -hmm. in It's the Ukrainian science base mm. um, in the uh, <clears throat> Antarctic Peninsula. Oh, wow. So... I went and um, it's the most southern bar in the world. So Ukrainians being Ukrainians decided, hey, we're bored. It's winter in Antarctica, which means it's dark 24 seven. Right. So what should we do? Let's build a bar. So they literally build this gorgeous wooden bar like yeah. next to their station. Mm -hmm. And they make their own vodka, like this potato vodka. Oh, wow. Um, they were awesome. So we showed up and I was with Josephine, who as you said is a, a model. We're with her friend who's a model. And these guys hadn't seen a woman in oh like God. six months. <laughs> and and you could like see oh the drool, no, the drool like, just like coming like out of their mouth. You're like, ah. And, <laughs> you're like, and we so better all, get out of here. So I'm gonna have to yeah, fight someone. <laughs> so all of these guys were like drooling. But there was one guy who I guess heard from someone that I was a musician and he just started bawling. And I was like, are you, are you okay? Like, what's... Mm -hmm. And he goes, I've been recording so my songs for two years at this station, and I haven't been able to play it for any other musicians who would understand it. Oh. 
And oh, he's like, he goes, can I give you my album? Like he had a thumb, like a little thumb drive. And he goes, can I give this to you and just promise me you'll listen? Mm-hmm. And he, and I walked back and he had like the studio and he had an acoustic guitar. So he was like, would you play some songs? So I played some songs for him. Mm-hmm. And so like, we kind of played each other songs. And nice. so it wasn't a full on concert, but I mean, it was, I was playing at a bar in Antarctica, the most Southern With bar in the world. Woman. Like. For, no, but there was like yeah. people at the bar, yeah. so yeah. it was like playing like a little bar show. And it That's was, so cool. Those are those unexpected awesome. moments, right? Those are the best. Was he any good? He was good. I didn't understand anything, but <laughs> yeah, he was, he was actually pretty good. Yeah. He's like awesome. science, ti- scientist by day, and then he's had like this musician by night. studio. Yeah. That's awesome. Like you're in Antarctica, man. Right like, in wow. I get that. Oh, science crazy. and musicians, they kind of go that. hand, yeah. those brains go hand in hand. That's yeah. True. Yes. That's true. And right, this, cool. this is one that um, I always find when I'm traveling is um, a life hack for making a hotel room more like home. Josephine taught me this. Okay. Josephine carries her own pillow everywhere. So she has like a carry-on, but she has like her you know checked-in bag, and then she has her carry-on. In her carry-on, half of it is like a folded pillow, and it's just like some bamboo pillow with like whatever oil-free you know satin what case, case she has on it that like <laughs> helps her skin or whatever it is but she swore by it she's like babe i can go anywhere in the world i can sleep in a car on a plane anywhere and if i have my pillow like a comfortable pillow that i can rest my head on every night it's a complete lifesaver i get and that that's it and you would think like uh oh, you know you bring some like she also used to carry um a picture frame with her and a little brother and she just put it next to the next Aww, to the bed. Oh, like that. um, that's sweet. But the pillow thing, I think, yeah. is uh, it's a good life hack. I yeah. did the pillow thing pillow. in China, yes, right? But did, it was a yeah. bad idea. I ended up having one of Avril's band members carry it for me all through China because I had too many bags. <laughs> I, the weather was changing. I didn't know. It was like a rookie, <laughs> r- rookie have a pillow tour. Bag. I was a rookie tour. Yeah. So he's carrying my pillow, and the, of course, the our people who are supposed to, you know, lug our luggage, mm-hmm. basically, for yeah. lack of a better term, did not show. So I'm the asshole running through the all the airports with these two massive bags, and our yep. tour manager, mm-hmm. we're there for a month, has got this like tiny little bag for four weeks. I like, how it. do you do that? He goes, I roll them. I wear one thing. <laughs> yeah, the roll. Like you know. So I learned mm-hmm. how to travel, but the pillow was so nice to have. But mm-hmm. I just. I couldn't carry it. I had too yeah, many that's things. That's her thing. The but pillow. I get that. She's taught me, so. Gotta love the pillow. Yeah. Love it. Sounds, all right. sounds great. Um, all right, so from this year, um, tell us a fun travel story. Whew, from this year. Um, or any year. You know, for this year. Mm, let me I think like about this. this. It's gotta be a good There's one. gotta be tons yeah. of fun travel so, stories. There's too many. The There's engagement story is actually oh, a good God, travel yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so. want to hear that. Please, please, So, we... So I had been planning this engagement, and the reason it took so long actually is because with all the traveling she's done, all the traveling that I've done, neither of us had seen the Northern Lights. So it's like this weird freak thing, like I thought she had because she's from Scandinavia, and you know, you go to Norway or Finland or Greenland, it's like Mm -hmm. abundant, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So I was like, okay, we have to see the Northern Lights together. And the first song I wrote about her was called Aurora Borealis, which is the Northern Lights. Mm -hmm. So I was like, to make this come full circle, I need to do it under the Northern Lights because then it's like the song was in the battle of the, you know, all of these things. So, so romantic. We're, so we're going to, <laughs> we're going to Norway because our favorite animals are orcas, killer whales. So we're going to Norway to free dive with killer whales in the ocean. And all my friends are like, dude, you're going to Norway, Northern Norway in winter. You're going to see the Northern Lights like every other night. Every, probably every night, you're, they're just going to be present. Everywhere, present. He's like, you're going to be completely jaded by the time you come back. So I'm like, awesome, like, buy the ring. You know, my friend Mark makes this beautiful ring. And I have it in the pocket of my, like, parka. Mm-hmm. And night one, no Northern Lights. Night two, <sighs> no Northern Lights. It's an eight-day trip. We get to, like, <laughs> night six. And it is just overcast, like, completely constant. And then one night there were stars, no northern lights, and I was freaking out. So I remember Joe, she, we were on the deck, and she's like, babe, I'm really cold. Can I wear your parka? I'm like, no. <laughs> and she's so like, mean. geez, why are you being so mean? Like, let me wear your parka. I'm freezing. And I'm like, babe, I'm cold too. I need my parka. And she's like, you're being so weird. Like, you've never not, like, not let me wear your clothes. And I'm like, babe, I'm just I'm I'm freaking really cold. cold. <laughs> and so... Because it was like right here, so she would have she would have found the ring. So last night, day eight, no northern lights, and I'm in 
full panic mode. So she gets an email from her, her modeling agency saying, hey, your China job just got moved to a week later. So, you know, you're off tomorrow. Oh. So she's like, should we just extend like one extend, night? Just extend the trip. And I'm like, right. let's extend one night, right? So we extend. And this night wasn't even supposed to happen. And we ended up driving a car across the border to Finland. Mm-hmm. And Northern Lights hit. Oh, so it's like, and you had it in your pocket. That, that's so very stressful. So we did it. So we did. It. I walked onto this like frozen lake, which is quite, you could say like the frozen fish, like swimming in the lake. It was crystal clear. So went out on a lake and made a um, campfire, which didn't seem smart to <laughs> make a campfire on ice. ice, but these Finnish guys swore it was, it was okay. completely perfectly cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I did it there. So we finally saw, but it shouldn't have happened. Yeah. I mean, full pan, full yeah. stress mode. But just carrying Fate that around in. for a week is 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 a lot. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'm then, going through airport security. I'm like, this ding 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 yeah, ding. Yeah, it's gonna beep. And I'm like, sir, empty your pockets. I'm like, no, you're gonna I detain won. me. And I'm just <laughs> at all oh, costs. God. I that that could have been a whole out. different story. But thank God, yeah. that's yeah. a good one. I love that one. Tension yeah. to release. Exactly. <laughs> Very great. And I and I wasn't supposed to. I probably would have never went to Finland. So. Yeah, that's another like happy accident of like, okay, let's take the car, and we had we had to drive there to see the lights. So I, yeah. I thought I was getting engaged in Norway, and ended up being Finland. Finland, so, I love that. that. That's yeah. cool. That's happy that. accidents. Yes, love, love that peninsula. Um, so talking about tension while traveling, what about um, losing your bags? You lost your bags while traveling. Um, Any other travel nightmare if you haven't? I have lost my bag. So I had a Ramoa bag, um, which is like one of those big steel or whatever aluminum hard case bags and I landed at LAX not a cool city or anything but I landed in LAX and my bag had looked like someone got an empty soda can and went like this like it was the craziest shaped Ramoa bag you've ever seen how does it and get like so that? when it went around it, it went around like the thing and I saw it and I started saw. laughing I go, whose bag is that because <laughs> my, my bag doesn't look like that who's who kind of guy that's a weird Ramoa and it came back around and I like I looked and I'm like oh man Crap. and they had just like saran wrapped it like after like plastic wrapped it and I go to the lady and I go I, I was like laughing I was like how what happened and she just looks at it and she's just like you name the price and like I'm right well Delta will write the check right now and she's like, I've never seen a bag so destroyed. Apparently, it had fallen off one of the, the carts. The car- right? Paris- oh, the, the carts and an yeah. airplane tire ran, ran over, over it. <laughs> so this car was crossing oh in front of the airplane. Like, what are the this, odds? This, this <laughs> cart was crossing in front of the airplane. The bag fell. I don't know if like the pilots were too high and couldn't see it. And the airplane just went <laughs> oh my like gosh. over my Ramoa. I it's wish like, we had a video of that. that I have pictures hilarious. of the bag, which I'll show you. It just it looks crazy. Oh I'm like the gosh. only thing worse would have been like the bag falling out of the airplane like midair. Right. Like, yeah. What's worse than well, you like, travel, an airplane ran it over? You travel so much, there has to be some stories. So like right. your yeah. odds of there being a catastrophe with your luggage <laughs> have gone high. up yeah, exponentially. No more. That's great. I love it. All right, so um, two more here. Um, weird hobby or pastime that you enjoy while traveling? Hmm. Hmm. I'm always looking for yellow things. Weird Shocker. hobby or pastime? I'm just shopping, but that's not a hobby. Shopping. It's. I don't know. It's a pretty. Um, Ooh. Ooh. Sorry. Ooh. <laughs> that's an addiction. I'm, as most people know, I, I love to have fun. I kind of party mm-hmm. a lot, maybe mm-hmm. too much sometimes. Um, I love tasting the weirdest spirits from different parts of the world or not even not that have these spirits but just drinks in general mm-hmm. so remember in taiwan i had um cobra blood Ooh. which was just as bad as you would expect Ugh. i've had a drink you, that had like weren't you worried like about getting sick again scorpions like in it something this was on that tour Oh, so this was, so that this sense. Sense. it might not have been the water <laughs> it could have been the cobra, the cobra blood, blood. <laughs> um, so that's always pretty fun for me and then I love um, my dad growing up we always went camping played liar's dice so mm-hmm. I always carry cups and dice with me 
Awesome. So having a weird spirit and playing liar's dice. Love it. It's a great it's a combination. Great, it's kind a great of answer. Naughty, naughty combination right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get, get into some trouble. Um, all right. So before we, we're going to launch into, right after this question, we're going to launch into like a little bit with this. Uh, class 14 is sponsoring this section. They're Yay, a watch company. We love class 14. And, um, they have Valerie's the coolest watches. always wanting the watch. So um, yeah, we've got a black watch right here Ooh, nice. um, going on. Um, so that before we go and dive into that, um, if you could assemble the ultimate iconic band, living or dead, yeah. who would it be? Ooh, um, okay. I would take, um, can only be one singer. Oh no, just as many singers as you want. You could have a whole like okay. slew of them. Um, it's your band. It's Alex. your band. They could all be just singers. a boy band, a boy band. It could be like you know singers. Jimmy Fallon with like the little like kids musical oh, instruments. Man, God, I have so many. Um, Somebody's gonna feel very left, left out, out unless they're I'm dead. I'm feeling left out already. <laughs> they have to be alive. No, yeah. alive or dead. Okay, so I'd have Stevie Wonder on piano. Oh. I'd have Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine on guitar. Okay. I would have. I'd have three lead singers, and it'd be Sinatra, Timberlake, and Freddie Mercury. Oh, yeah. Those are good. <laughs> and then I would have, oh, man. I don't know. I love, like, Nina Simone. Yeah. Oh. She's kind of crazy. We'll throw Nina in there somewhere. This is, this is kind of like creating, like, the ultimate band of, like, you know, playoff songs. I'm just imagining the songs they would write. Guys, that's hard. People are, yeah. like... It's easy to say like who I'd have dinner with because I'd take like one athlete, one singer, but to compile a, a band. I'm I'm really liking what you've compiled there because I, I I'm think just it's pretty good. I'm Justin imagining Timberlake going on tour with all of them and then Stevie writing Wonder. with them. That but I would so if I, I would I would make it so it was like we only get one p instrument. Like you get one person per thing. So Perfect. maybe I'd okay. do Freddie Mercury. I'd have like Johnny Cash on rhythm guitar. Oh, really? Tom Morello on <clears throat> electric lead guitar. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Stevie Wonder on keys. Chuck Mangione on, on a trumpet and on drums. Do, 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 do. Ashton Irwin. Oh, because he's my boy. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put Ashton. Ashton on drums. We love oh, Ashton. Yay. He's gonna be so stoked. Matt McGuire is gonna be pissed. <laughs> 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 it'll be what? It'll be Aussie versus up. Aussie. <laughs> He's going to be like, okay, I'm coming on the show and I'm going to totally get Alex on this one. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's love very that. cool. All right, cool. Um, so anyway, just, so we're going to do this really fast and it's basically um, kind of like, um, whose line is it anyway, where basically the points don't matter, but they do because you know, I get to choose how many points. And then okay. there's a watch um, involved. There's a watch involved. Another watch. And <laughs> Basically, um, what the producers put together is um, that you get points if you've been to these places and you get double, maybe even triple if you've worked, played or have a cool story from there. So you've got to kind it's of very like, complicated, you've got to Ella. up your cool stories, but it's going to be really fast. So Some of anyway. them I can't talk about. Oh yeah. dear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with her on that. Some of them are like RX rated, maybe? I don't know. All right. So, so we'll start with the watch somewhere in the middle. I'm, I'm usually a little bit further, further over here. But anyway, so Sydney, Sydney, Australia. Have you been, Val? Oh, have I been? Yes, yeah. I've been. You've been. Okay. It's a cool story. Uh, Did you work there? I got my, well, not in Sydney, but mm -hmm. on, on, um, I, I burned probably every part of my body on Bondi Beach because I didn't put any sunscreen on and was topless. Whoa! And that she hurt. had to throw the top of him. You know, that hurt. she, she I knew mean, that was gonna get extra. Saying. I'm like, she's getting a point right here. That's like major I points. I want to win that watch. Like Damn it! Points no. right here. She's almost won, Alex. All right, how about you? Um, I. Of course, you've been to Sydney. I permanently damaged my vocal cords. <laughs> I think he might win, <laughs> he though. Might win. I think Alex I might win that. I don't know, Topless versus know. ruining your vocal cords. I'm like, I thought cool. I had that one, okay. but damn it, Alex. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, we've already covered this one, but I'm just going to say it anyway, Antarctica, because, you know, obviously you have that cool story from the bar, which is absolutely brilliant. I love that. Um, was there anything else that happened while you were there? Um, I had too much vodka and took all my clothes off and went swimming in Antarctic waters because that's always a great idea with um well, that's cold <laughs> I don't know whether I should give you minus points yeah. or positive points dumb points dumb, dumb, points. dumb I de definitely dumb give dumb me dumb points dumb, dumb, dumb points, points. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dumb points there you go no I have not been to Antarctica so. you haven't do you want to go I'm sure why yeah, not why not yeah Some I love to travel okay cool um this one um have you this, this these points are dependent on whether you've played or worked there the troubadour in Los Angeles uh yes yes, yes and yes. no 
What is no for? Worked, been, not but played. played. How about you? It was my first LA show, but I, I was so nervous that I don't have any fun story. I, I don't was have like, any so, recollection I, of what I happened. Was like, <laughs> on my best behavior because I was so scared to play the troubadour that I was oh like, gosh. I'm not talking to people before the show. I'm not yeah. meeting up after. I'm just like so <laughs> honed in. So as much as I wish it was still my crazy. I, yeah. I think he still gets points for playing. Yeah, I think I for it being, it being your first show, you, I think, sorry. I'm sorry. All right. It's moving closer away. Okay. It's the watch is <laughs> moving closer further away. away from me. Closer away. I like that. I'm going to use that. Closer, closer away. away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Paris, France. Yes. Yes. Oh. Story. Uh, God, a uh, story from Paris. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of boring. It's just when everybody was smoking in Paris, like they, yeah. it's, they still smoke, but not indoor. When I yeah. went, it was the last year before it was banned. And then in Italy and I was so, so sick, super, super sick. Um, we had, I was there during the bombing of mm. King's Cross. Mm. So we were leaving, oh, wow. <clears throat> we were in Avignon and we were getting onto the train. We'd been in Paris for a few days and then we were going on to London. And mm -hmm. so we, I was sick as a dog. Um, we got, had a train ride. We were in the fr first class part of the train ride. Mm -hmm. Nobody served any food because the French wouldn't, they wouldn't get on. There was no staff. There was just a oh, driver. Gosh. So we end up in this cabin and my husband looks at me and says, you need to grab your bag and like just run like hell because we need to get a cab. So now we're in London. We run, find this cab. All these people start piling in. We've got to get through, we've got to get into um, Camden. Oh, Camden, So the like Camden, yeah. Heath, Camden yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. We get into London. There's police tape around Buckingham Palace. I've never seen anything oh, like it in my life. Jesus. Nobody's on the street. There's nobody in the pubs. You know, Roger, Apocalypse. our friend, is, yeah, totally freaking out. I'd never seen London like that before. It was it was crazy. We finally did get to the door, though. But it took us. I don't even know how long it took us just to get from Paris in, into, into London, London that day. But that was pretty scary. Yeah. It was a scary story. But yeah. Stephen's like, we're getting on the train. You know, I'm a Jew, and you know, well, I'm not going <laughs> to let this stop me. And you know, the, the, they're I coming to Steven. they're coming to interview, mm. and people are not getting on the train. He's like, of course we're going. I'm like, we are. Are we? We are. The train. We're going. <laughs> so that was my my I, scary yeah, I, Paris story. I, I can't beat that story, but I went to Paris last summer with um, my dad, stepmom, little brother, and little sister. It was all their first time in Europe. Wow. And <laughs> just, you know, I feel like there's select moments in your life where you look back on it like, that was one of the best moments of my life. Mm -hmm. And they had never been to the Eiffel Tower. And I remember like with my whole family, I don't see him that often. I travel so much, so I right. cherish these moments. Right. And we had like this blanket, and I remember there's like these guys walking around with like the cheapest champagne, like ever. like you know two dollars for a bottle of champagne, and I'll yeah, it. we'll take yeah. four. <laughs> and I remember like my dad, you know, giving like my younger siblings permission to drink, even though like they're in high school. And we all just like laid under the Eiffel Tower, and it was just like oh, I love sparkling, that. oh, that's, and that's we all sweet. were like, you know, like try to go to you Paris Disneyland. We were hammered. Um, tried to go to Paris Disneyland the next day, and my dad like couldn't go on rides. He was so hungover. Oh. But it was like the best night ever. We're like mm -hmm. singing songs, and it's like just one of those invaluable moments that I'll remember forever with like yeah. my whole family together, and like just seeing the way they looked at the Eiffel Tower for the first time. It's beautiful. So it's like, totally worth it. Not like a cool that. story, but no, but it's one really of my special. It's, it's one cool. Of my yeah. It's a cool nights. different story. It's better than my story of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. <clears> for one day, I was probably like nine or ten years old, and I was wearing these flip flops and it was raining and my parents were determined that we were gonna climb the Eiffel Tower because it was like an experience I had to have. And I just remember crying almost all the way up because the elevators were broken and we were having to climb and my flip flops were sliding everywhere. I like fell down three times. That does sound so pretty miserable. I would really like to re-experience it doing what you did. Yeah, just don't climb it. Just, just, <laughs> just, climb just lay it. down on the grass and admire have a couple it. shots. <laughs> yeah. Everything yeah. is good in the world. All right, let's do a couple more here. Let All me right. see. I'm, I'm going to choose, um, let's see, I'm going to choose Tokyo. Yes, 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 yes. Like nine times, but you've probably no, you, been you way first. more than me. But I want to hear your story. I can't you, tell you been, been my been Tokyo story. Been, well, you've been like three or four times. <laughs> well, I went in college, yeah. 19, 20, 20, 20, 22, with my boyfriend at the time mm -hmm. in, uh, in like the summers. Um, and then I went back a couple times after that. Mm -hmm. And you were teaching English, weren't you? I was teaching English in Tokyo. <clears throat> I was partying a lot. <laughs> Let me teach you English. Doing some illegal substances. Very illegal. Uh, yeah. You know, 
wandering out in the woods i don't know if i was clothed or not not sure what She's was happening really amping it up we yeah. were we were do you know hanabi in the summer when i was i was like <laughs> in my 20s so it's not like i did it yesterday <laughs> <laughs> you know everyone has watching going wow wow it's like and you know so Hanabi is there uh, they have fireworks during the summer and it's like their beginning of summer and it's this big celebration if you go out to Yokohama and the beach there's a big fireworks well my boyfriend at the time had a cabin out there and we were like just you know just going out, for it yeah just out in the wilderness and it was super fun and I think we got up and did uh Fuji one morning too we like New Year's Day climbed up to Mount Fuji um, I mean just and then because, can't, beat know, can't beat that and then Sorry. back to back to Tokyo um, yeah. more partying and debauchery I don't know just I can't Tokyo even just a blur is like without a doubt if not my favorite city like top, Me too. top two or wow. three it's just so the fun. best place ever Lots it's of watered thing. down drinks where you get drink tickets, right? Yeah. You'll get like 10 vodka mm-hmm. and waters, but like it's those highballs or whatever they, yeah. they yes. drink. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> my brother's going to kill me for this one. Um, took him, at, we talked about the graduation trip that I give my siblings. So he chose Tokyo. And the first night <laughs> we go to the, my friends uh, own a, a club in Tokyo. So we go out to this club and they like, they set us up at the table and there's all these like young girls. My brother's 18, just turned mm-hmm. 18. You know, I'm engaged, but there's like all of these, like probably 20 year old girls that mm-hmm. my brother is just going crazy. <laughs> and so they set us up at the table in the corner and there's like, you know, bottles and like the buckets. And my brother's like, how much, like, do I just pour a shot and then we go pay? And I was like, no man, like it's, it's, it's free. free. And he's like, <laughs> Is this what you do every night? Like, I'm like, no, no. But he was like freaking out. He's like, most nights, girls, but not every night. Girls, he's like, you know, the the like Japanese waiters like are pouring him all these shots, and I remember him. He was like dan like there's a whole circle of like people around him. He's like dancing. He's just having like the best night of his life. And he even looked over at me one time. He's like, this is the best night of my life it's like first night in tokyo <laughs> and wow. so every he's, teenage boy's fantasy he's getting very very drunk mm-hmm. and i look at him and i go you're cut off i go i'm trust me dude we have like 10 days here i'm looking out for you Devin. just no more like you've had fun we've been here for four hours and i go no more shots because i saw him just take like three in mm-hmm. four minutes right he looks me dead in the eye and just goes <laughs> and takes a shot and I go you motherfucker I was so pissed I was like I'm gonna fucking kill you and sure enough like within 15 minutes I'm like where's Devin like he's, he's been in the bathroom for 15 minutes I'm like great he's so barfing I, I rip him of- out and I'm like we're out of here so walk him to the taxi we get in and I'm like alright tell the driver or just like show him on the map of my hotel and we start driving and I just hear oh I go, no I go no. no I look over and he's just and I go Devin and swallow it swallow it now like you do not throw up in this japanese taxi swallow it and he tries to swallow it and he just every that, that probably and just, made it worse and then just explodes all over the taxi right and i'm just like panicking i'm like i'm gonna kill this kid i'm literally gonna kill him it's like his first night i'm gonna strangle him i just bought him this trip and he's like doing this to me so well you did bring him to the club with I, all the booze i mean booze. what did you expect i, I, know, I know so I also told him to stop drinking. So we <laughs> open we open the door, and this is the most Japanese thing to ever have happened. The taxi driver they're so polite. apologizes I'm, to us yes. because their doors don't open from the inside unless they unlock them. And we did try to get out. So he was saying sorry to us so sorry. for yeah, him to throw so up Japanese. in his taxi. And he's like pulls out his cleaning supplies and he's like cleaning oh my God. and he wouldn't let us pay. He's like, I'm so sorry. So my brother starts walking. I thought this was the worst. We start walking. My brother goes to throw up and turns. He doesn't realize, throws up on a police officer's <gasps> boots. No. Oh. I think you may be winning this. Sorry. I mean, the device. Uh, I know. Neither of us are winning them. this. My I bro- can't share no, the rest. This isn't my story. This is my brother's story. So <laughs> okay, technically, okay, my brother's winning this. Your brother this. wins the watch. Puked on this cop's boots. And I had to just like apologize over and over to this cop. Like, I'm s- please, I'm so sorry. So we, our hotel was five miles away. I made him walk five miles through Tokyo at three in the morning to go home. And I walked oh. with him, but I'm like, you're walking home tonight. You're in, like, this oh is your God. punishment. Poor Devin. So he was just, he was, he was crying. He's like, 
This is the best night of my life. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's so funny. That's a great story. That. You know, I don't think we can really top that. I mean, there are tons more countries here, but you're just going to have to come back and we'll have to do this all, all over right, again. Good. But um, I think I think it's okay that I just... Yes, you know, Alex won. I'm, I'm going to be all British. Yes. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but you lost. Thank you. Yay. Awesome. Devin wins. Yeah. Devin, Devin, sure. Devin won Devin the watch. Won the class 14 thank watch. So thank you, class 14, for... Um, Allowing us to find thank out. Thank you, more Class 14. We love you. And thanks Great. for sharing, Alex. That was a lot of fun. Thank, thank you, you for your for stories. Me. Yeah. And don't forget to go to Alex's Instagram because you have a link to your album on yes, there. Yes, at Bones, B O H N E S. There we go. All right. Don't forget cool. to do it. Thanks, Yay. guys. Thank you. Thanks.